The Spirit has been all over this building this last week, hasn't it? God is good. I, um... I have, a, I have a sermon that has PowerPoints. It has everything. I, I've got my clicker. I've got my slides. I want to preach on first fruits. In a sense, everything is the Lord's, right? So why do we cling so hard to it? Why do preachers, when they know the Lord wants to do something in their service, they still write out their sermons and make their PowerPoints and, and get everything ready, even though they know God wants to do something in the service that I don't even understand, that I don't even know? And I know we're starting to look like one of those crazy churches, aren't we? <laughs> if God asks them, I tell them, you bring it out of me. What does God want to say to us, church? What was the prophecy that we feel like we're small, right? That we feel like we're insignificant. I always feel like some people in our congregation, they feel just darn near invisible, right? Like God doesn't see or doesn't hear. Is it even possible that a church in the middle of Belvedere, in the middle of a neighborhood, nobody even knows where we're at. People live here 20 years. You say, I go to Belvedere first. They're like, where's that, right? <laughs> nobody even knows where we're at. Yeah, God listens to us. Did you know that? That if you honestly believe what this word says, and I honestly believe it because I see it come true, every day of my life I see this word come true. That the words we say here have impact in the spiritual world. That God takes what we say, He honors those prayers, and He does things with them. That sometimes we pray with no expectation and no faith because we haven't seen a miracle in long enough that we're not sure we're ever going to see a miracle. That we don't ask for the Holy Spirit because we've never received the Holy Spirit, so we're not sure that's even how it is. That maybe, maybe I just don't get it, or maybe I, I have something wrong with me, or maybe there's some reason God doesn't want me. But you know, God's word will be true even when every man is a liar. Did you know that? That his word will not return void. Because when God speaks it, he speaks it with such power that not only is it true when he speaks it, but when God says it, it's always true and has always been true because he is God. And you know, God has spoken things over the lives of people in this congregation that they haven't seen it come to pass yet, and it's been so long that they're worried that it'll ever, never come to pass. They're worried that they've missed their chance. You know, I had my opportunity. I had this one chance, but I messed it up. I sinned. I did something I should have did. I went right when I should have gone left. And now God can't use me anymore. And there's nothing left for me. And I want to tell you, that's such a lie. And you know how I know it's a lie? Because the devil's told me the same thing. Because he doesn't have any new tricks. He only does what he's always done. He uses the same thing that he probably used on your parents. And he knew it would work on you because you're like him, right? The same lie that he's done with you, that, that you're not going to receive it, that, that that time has passed you on, that there's, you know, you know, Mona, there's no retirement for us. You know that, right? We work and then we, we're just going to go to work one day and we're going to show up at the Lord's house instead of this house, right? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just how we do, right? And yet there are people that the enemy is just convinced. You got nothing to offer the body of Christ. You got nothing to offer anyone, that the words you speak don't matter to anybody. Nobody listens to you. Do you ever feel unheard? Do you ever feel like, like, like the words are coming out of your mouth, and, and you know you mean them, and, and, and it hurts you even to say them sometimes, and yet the other person just looks at you like an old cow staring at a new gate, right? They don't know what in the world, because God has put greatness in your heart. And one of your big missions in life, one of your big callings, one of the things you've got to figure out is how to take that anointing and that greatness that God, he says he sets eternity in the hearts of men. And you've got to find some way to take that calling and that eternity that he's placed in you, that little picture of himself when he made you in his image. He didn't just make mankind in his image, he made you in his image. Do you know there's not a kid born that doesn't have something that they took from their parents? 
When Hunter was born, I had an accident when I was 19, and, and I had facial reconstruction. I had my nostrils were pointed out instead of down. They had to rebuild my entire face, cracked my skull, broke the orbitals around my eyes. So everything was really broken, right? It was only the second time my life should have been taken from me and not the last time, but God protected me through everyone, possibly just so I could be here to talk to you today about this. But one of the things they asked when Hunter, when Krista was pregnant with Hunter is, is he going to have your new nose or your old nose, right? <laughs> going to have the one you got now or the one you had before the accident? There's no kid that doesn't bear some resemblance to one of their parents. If you are God's kid, then he set something of himself inside of you, and you bear a resemblance to him. And if you've been born again in Christ, then there should be something in your life that reflects that reality so that when people see you, they, they see something of your heavenly Father in you. There should be something about that that reflects coming out of you, coming out of your mouth, coming out of your actions. I was so scared when I was first saved because I kept reading that verse that my sheep will know my voice, and I kept thinking I have no idea what God's voice sounds like. And I didn't for a long time. And I, and I realized later on that that was because when I was young... I could be saved like everyone else in the church. I could act like they act. I could go to Sunday school. I could pretend I could fool anyone and make them think I was. But when I really came to know God, I realized I didn't know his voice. Did you know sometimes being filled with the Holy Spirit, sometimes learning to hear the voice of God, it's not always just given to you? I know we're in that age, right? I, I put things in the microwave. I hit express cook. I don't even hit one zero zero start anymore. I hit one button and it just one minute and it's going, right? Is there something of God that he wants to show you that you're going to have to press through to get? Is there something of God that he has put in you that he wants to bring out of you and you're not going to get there by sitting around and hoping? But you're going to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. And as you begin to do the word, there's a lot in there. I, we'd be here all day. Um, it was a good PowerPoint. I might use it again sometime. I just want to encourage you guys. This is, this is, this is, last year was kind of our year in review. Last year we were still kind of looking back to last year. This year is the first fruit. I, I guess that's what I kind of knew. The, the funny thing is, is, when you're, when you're in your devotions and you're, you're seeking the Lord's will on, on what to do, um, I kept going back to Amos, and it says the Lord does nothing except he reveals it first to his prophets. It says that in Amos, and that verse is underlined, and, and my Bible just kept falling open to that, and I was like, well, no, we're on this series of things, and, and we're going to do that, or no, I'll go, I'll go and finish up Ephesians because I started that, and, and, and every time I just, I just felt God turning me back to that he does nothing except he reveals it first to his prophets because he was trying to tell me first that he wanted to move in the service that people came up today to be anointed because God wanted them to be here today to be anointed that he already knew before you got out of bed before you rubbed your eyes before you washed your face before you put on your smell good that you were going to be in this place and he has been waiting for you all morning did you know that I got here at 5 30 and the Holy Spirit beat me in the door did you know that and he has been waiting in this sanctuary all day for us to come forward. And some of you, man, you have family members, and I know because I can feel it in your heart that you just don't know what it's going to take to get them to come to the Lord. But what I'm telling you right now is that God, because of your words, because of the authority he has invested in you as one of his children, that when you cry out to him, your words are not in vain. People can run for a long time. Oh, I ran. I ran. Um, I was the middle child, I was the prodigal, I was a cliche. I had to do everything, you know, everything wrong for everything my brother and sister did right. I had to be the one that was, you know, the rebel and, and this and that and joined the Navy when I was 17 and, and went off and all that. And yet the Lord, the Lord knew where I was at. Not only that, but when I was in the Navy and I had come to know the Lord and he began to anoint my life and, and I'm just a Navy guy. I'm just like the lowest of the low. We're a seaman recruit, right? I mean, we had no stripes or one stripe. I mean, we were just, you know, the wogs and, and every derogatory term. And yet God kept bringing people across my path whose parents were praying for him. In fact, I almost knew if I was drawn to somebody that somebody was praying for that person. Did you know that your words are already having an effect on the life of the person that you're praying for? God is going to do miracles in our midst because we need the faith. You know that? We need to believe again. Man, we need to believe that the dead can be raised. We need to believe that the blind can see, that the deaf can hear, that the lame can walk. We need to believe the Bible again. 
Man, the world is always trying to rip it out of your hands. They're always trying to tell you it's a fairy tale. They're always trying to take the truth of the Word of God away from you. But God's Word will remain long after all of those people have passed on. Did you know that? God's given somebody a word. I want you to stand up and say that word. God's speaking somebody, something to someone's heart right now, and the congregation needs to hear what you're going to say, and I want you to stand up and say it. I've been here for a few months. This is the first time I came into this church. I stand in here right in the spot, and I started feeling my legs were vibrating, my feet were vibrating, and first I thought, what am I doing wrong? It's got to be cold in my legs. And I remember, no, this is talking about cold, not hard. And in the moment when I realized, no, it's not hard, something else in the most different room and it's hard to explain it but you can go to a different spot from where I'm standing and he looked at me and there was a deep fear in my face and I said what do I feel what is this what is the shaking in my legs what is it and he said listen and listen and it sounds like Amen. He did. Before I came here, I saw it. There was a beacon and this light that came through it. The roof was gone. I was going to move so big in the fear. And I felt in my spirit since the end of last year that this year, this year you're going to see your family, the most people, the nieces and nephews. It's so weird. That specific thing, nieces and nephews. You claim them. You tell them you're thrown for them and you claim them and they are coming in. And you'll see it in here. Amen. Let me, let, me, let me help a few of you out. I know we've been taught church is a place where you sit down and shut up and stare at the preacher. I know that's how we were raised, right? No running in the church, sit down, shut up and stare at the preacher. And I'm the best preacher in the world. I believe it. But I am not the only person in this congregation that God wants to use, am I? I'm not the only person in this congregation that has a voice that the Holy Spirit is moving upon to speak. And one of the reasons why we need to start speaking out when the Lord moves on us in this church is because if you're not brave enough to do it here, we're all, well, you could, you, you know, you can be, you know, all kind, and we're going to love you here, right? And if you can't be brave enough to stand up for God here, how are you going to stand up for him out there? If you're not brave enough to speak here, how are you going to be brave enough to speak out there? See, this is a nursery. This is a training ground. I'm not, I'm not here to babysit. I'm here to train. I'm here because I'm going to put a weapon in your hand and send you out into the world. That's what I want to do. I don't want to just, you know, uh, he, you know so what, what was Casey saying in Sunday school this morning, you know, the, the easy gospel, the, the you know, we're, we're not always a happy church. You know, we're a good church, though. You know, good doesn't always mean we, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to communicate that effectively, so I won't try. But God is not always safe, but he is always good, right? And our church isn't always going to be safe, but it is always going to be good. And what I mean by that is you're going to come in here and you're going to feel convicted by the Holy Spirit at times. You're going to come in here and there are going to be things that bug you. There's going to be something that just hits you wrong and you're just, well, I don't know why he did that, right? You know why that happens most of the time? You ready for it? Pride, right? It's not the way I'm used to it. It's not the way I want to see it. It's not the way I expect it to happen. My, my charge to you is this. Is it the Holy Spirit? is the Spirit of God bearing witness with you in your spirit that He is moving in this place and that it's Him who's doing it. 
if you think it's me and I'm being entertaining and, and I'm doing it and it's all my, you know, just being a showman or whatever, then, then take that and, and wipe your dust off the feet as you leave. But if the Holy Spirit of God is moving on, then know that he is doing something in this place and that you're a part of it. You're in too deep now. There's no escape. God has got your heart. He's got you in his sights. He wants to do something with your life. I know sometimes we want to fade into the background and nobody can see us and we just want to sit back and just do our thing and I just want to get out of here so I can go watch a game. Well, listen, the Giants are going to beat the Packers. I'm sorry, it's going to happen. (laughs) But more than that, I should never say that from the pulpit. (laughs) More than that, God has something greater for you. Every place you go this afternoon, every place you go this week, you have jobs, you have family, you have a circle of influence. God has surrounded you with people that need you. And if there's no one in your life that needs God, you go out and find somebody. Because if you're just surrounded with Christians, you are not fulfilling the will of God. Let me tell you something now. If all your friends are saved and everybody you know is saved and everybody that's around you already has everything they need from the Lord, then you're not where you're supposed to be. Because God needs to put you in some lives that need what you have. There are people who need to be ministered to, and I'm not going to be able to get out to your job, and there are not going to be any other people that are going to cross their path except that God has put you in that place. I love you guys. Even when you all look at me like I'm crazy, I'm okay with that. I've been married to somebody for years who's been looking at me like I'm crazy. The sermon, such such as it is, is on first fruits. Because this service wasn't mine to preach. This was the Lord's to move in. So I want to give everybody one last chance. Like she said, let's all stand. Before we do anything else, just take a moment. Close your eyes, bow your head, and search your heart. Stand open before the Lord. Raise your hands. If he moves on you to raise your hands. Walk if he tells you to walk. Move if he tells you to move. But just listen in your heart for the word of the Lord. Father, what is it you would have me to do today? If you had the ear of the king of glory who owned the cattle on a thousand hills, if you had an audience with him for one moment and every desire of your heart could be redressed, could be spoken to, could be met, what would you ask him for? What would you ask him for? For some of you, it'd be a new job. For some of you, it'd be that God would restore your marriage. For some, it would be that God would notice you. For many of us, it's that God would save our kids, save our family, our nieces and our nephews. There's just a whole mess of people surrounding you that are so desperate, being washed down the stream. Stuff's just happening to them. They don't understand it. They feel like life has always been misery and has always been hell. Yet the kingdom of heaven has been placed in your heart. Will you take it to them? The altars are open. If you have a need, come forward. If you don't have a need and you just want to be in the presence, come forward. I'm not going to pray for you this time because this is between you and the Lord. Bring that thing on your heart that you would take over everything and lay it at His feet and say, Lord, this is what I need, but I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to win them.
Do I have any prayer warriors who will stand beside these and say that I will pray with you and I will stand with you? In Ezekiel, God said, I looked for one to stand in the gap and I found none. If he looks today for someone to stand in the gap on behalf of our brothers and sisters in this church, will he find none or will he find you? heart you've spoken to today, God, for every life that has been touched, for the move of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you. Father, for that person who hasn't heard your voice today, who hasn't heard you move on their heart, Lord, I pray that you don't leave them alone, that they don't wander away from you. Father, still feeling lost, but God, you walk beside them. That sometime this week, Lord, at some point when it's quiet, when there's no one else around, when there's complete silence for only a moment, Lord, that you speak into their heart again, Father. Call to them, Lord. Call to them. Because it is your will that all men come to know you. Lord, let us reflect your glory and your mercy. Let us reflect your goodness, Lord. And we thank you for it. And the church said, Amen. turn around, love on somebody, tell them you're glad they're here today. Say, I like it when the pastor's short.